I look at this. We're back to the work table at last. My mic levels seem very loud. I'm going to turn them down slightly. Welcome to Friday Tea Time, where we are sculpting some oxalotls, oxalotl height. Oxalot. Okay, that's just going to make my camera mad and I'm going to stop. We'll just leave this here for a minute. Hello, Zesabit. Yes, it's oxalotl time. My mic still seems very loud. Tweaking it some. There we go. So, we have some oxalotl reference printed out. I have a pretty good idea of kind of how I want to do it. If we have time, I'm going to do two because I want to have a bigger uh, leucistic. Leucistic or albino? Anyway, the, the pigmentless ones. Hello, Aracraft. Welcome. And then I want to do a smaller, dark one on top of him. And leuc leuc leucistic. I was correct. It's not albino. It's leucistic. Good. All of my words are right. Um, and I've got a new clay that we haven't used before, that I haven't used before. Um, it's a red clay that should sort of fire to that sort of dark terracotta red. Um, and if you look at it closely, you can see it's got like a very sandy texture. Oh, now the camera focuses. Cool. Um, <laughs> later when I wanted to show you the details of a, of a head of a creature, it won't, but now it does. Um, anyway, that should help give us some strength for our, for our thin, thin wispy bits. Um, and help prevent them from warping and cracking as they dry. Um, but it also means that it's going to be very difficult to work very, very small because of the grains. So we're going to going to make a, a fairly good size oxalotl. Um, and then when I fire it, I should be able to put a nice white glaze over it and the red will come through as the sort of under pigment for the white one. And uh, that is the plan. I've, I've cut some pieces off um, a fairly good size, so I think that I won't have to dig back into the clay and force you to listen to the crinkling of plastic. But we'll see as it goes. Um, oh, this has effect, plugging in headphones. If you guys have any issues with my audio, please let me know. Um, because I'm on Mac and using OBS and a plugged-in lavalier mic, it's always kind of um, random how it works for some reason. It's quite a nice mic, and when it works, it works really well. But sometimes my computer decides to override it with the mic in the headset that I'm wearing or the built-in mic of my laptop, which is over to the side which changes the volume and the amount of noise and just generally causes issues. So if anybody has any audio issues, just shout. <laughs> ah, well, if you don't plug in your headphones, but you wear them, yes, I'm afraid that that is not a problem on my end that I can solve. That's, that's for you to deal with. Let's make some noise though, slapping some clay now that you've got headphones on. And kind of. This piece I think will be oxalotl body. I don't want to trap any air in there, but this has already been wedged, so. So that's all safe and good. But I did kind of fold it over, you can kind of see, so I want to squeeze that a little bit. All right, let's. Let's move the reference now that we're all on the same page as to what we're making and start working with some clay. I apologize that the camera is going to wobble, but, but such is the desk. The camera is strapped to the desk, making a, a nice thick Oxalotl sausage to start. 
This is also how you would start making something like slab or um, coil and scrape pottery where you'd make a coil and then scrape them together. Pottery effect to start off the, the oxalotl stream. Also, we're back with this lovely, uh, oh, camera hates it when I roll clay. We're back with this lovely, lovely canvas that I've since washed after using the black clay on it. It's going to be my dark clay canvas. I have another clean one for white clay so that I can try and keep things tidy. So let's see. Oxalotl. A big oxalotl, so maybe maybe there-ish. And then start getting some shape in. We've got a flat tail with a bit of a fin on it. And uh, I'm probably going to add some clay to the head, I think, because they've got kind of a big, big flat sort of head. But we can do that when we get there. I hope everyone's having a good Friday, and I hope everyone's excited, like I am, to finally be back at the pottery table. Now that life is a little bit less hectic, and I'm a little bit less prone to sneezing and coughing. We can work with clay without having to constantly touch my poor computer. So let's let's see. The body has kind of the right. I'm going to draw some tool marks in here, give myself an idea of where the. Yeah, tapers into a tail. That side feels incorrect. Let's try that again. There we go. Well, today my headphones haven't corrected themselves and they're making a weird buzzing noise. So that's cool. <laughs> if anyone is thinking of streaming, I recommend using a PC. <laughs> Although maybe it's just OBS in general that's weird. Um, but it never seems to want to play the same week after week. It always seems to want to make weird, weird changes to my settings or not read them the same. And I, of course, blame my computer instead of the software, which is kind of unfair, I suppose. So, it's pretty, oh dear. So it's, let's see, I'm hearing that it's pretty consistent on PC, and then I'm hearing that OBS is just terrible. <laughs> ah, yes. Um, I don't, it's, uh, yeah, it has a tendency to just, and I don't know if this is, this could be just, software update stuff happening, but it has a tendency to uh, to stop, like it just, settings that I've been using just stop working. Um, I constantly have to re, to reset the settings for this camera, for example, every time it's not in use, um, or I unplug it, OBS just 
just forgets how it works, I guess, and can't find it again when I plug it back in and I have to add it back. So, you know, I don't know. It's, it's what we've got to work with. So, be thankful for what we're given, I guess. Be thankful there's something for Mac at all, honestly. Which is fair. All right. So, as I threatened on Twitter, I feel like we need, I feel like we need to do some some cheerful oxalotl storytelling. I don't know, maybe maybe like a happy children's book of oxalotl adventure. Maybe uh maybe just give him a name and start from there. And I apologize that there's going to be some some sniffing and such on the audio. I'm still dealing with a little bit of of sinusy illness. And uh, there's not a lot I can do about it besides just not talk, <laughs> which, uh, which has the potential to make this a very boring stream. So I'm just going to muddle through as best I can. Okay, it's kind of a good basic tail shape. I think it needs to to narrow a little bit more. Towards the end there. Hmm. Yes, this side might be working a little bit better. Get some some tail going on in there. And I will say for OBS that sometimes it works uh, it works quite well. Oh, this is way too much water. I have like I've gone too far. Ah <laughs> oh, well, it'll solve itself in a minute. Um, sometimes OBS works really well, and when it does, it works. I I find I find that the screen streaming is significantly more reliable for me. Um, I never seem to have issues with that. Whether it was the Stardew Valley streaming from from a a, a game, or whether it was um, whether it's the Cintiq and doing digital art. Which is why frequently, if if I'm not feeling particularly up for anything or adventurous, I will have a tendency to do the digital art stream because it's easier to set up, more reliable, and it's less likely to, uh, to cause me any significant amounts of annoyance. There's also less prep because there's no clay involved. You just open a blank Photoshop document and call it a day. But sculpture is fun. And I think it's, I don't know, this could just be me reading into things, but I think it's a little bit more interesting as a stream because I don't, I don't see it streamed much. And I think watching someone actually do it live is more interesting than watching the sped up versions where it's like, ooh, look at that. In stop motion shots, suddenly you have a whole thing. Those are fun and like relaxing, but they don't give you a lot of information about how something is actually made. And they they kind of cheat you into into sort of thinking something is easier to make than it really was sometimes or it makes 
the flow and ease of something appear greater than it would have been in reality. Um, and chat is gone quite quiet for me, so I don't know if that's uh, you guys or if that's my stream being broken, which is super possible. Um, because earlier it was not showing me anything. <laughs> no, that's that's actually fair, Necro Buffalo. Um, I often watch streams or sort of any full anytime anytime someone's making like even a YouTube video where they're not speeding it up or pausing and and cutting it around. Um, gives you a better idea. Gives you a better idea of um, of the thought process, the making process. I think I think this is the top. I've decided <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do something to remind myself there. Um, it, the thought process, the actual making process, when things get changed and messed up, and it it presents a much more real idea of the process of art. Because everybody, every everybody who makes art, everybody who who makes anything makes mistakes when they're doing it. That's just that's how that's how it works. You could you could be the best the best games programmer in the world, and you would still eventually write yourself a stupid bug that you were mad at yourself about later. Um, You can, you can be great at your job and still do something very silly that you look back on and go, well, that was a mistake that I should not have made. And yet here we are. Yeah, you remember how I said that was the top? Apparently... I changed my mind. <laughs> now it's the bottom. Oops. It's better as the bottom. I stand I stand by my my weird choice to change my mind in the middle of that. But yeah, I part of the part of the reason I wanted to start doing this was because I I wanted to it's gonna. It sounds weird to say force myself to show, but um, but kind of expose the whole process. It's one of the reasons that I'll frequently do thumbnails of ideas on a digital art stream that I don't even necessarily finish in the stream, um, or you know, I'll start with the sketch of something and talk about about what I want to do with it. Well, I've started to learn that this is a, a clay that cracks pretty, pretty soon after start. So let's get some more water on there. See if we can't smooth it out. We may just have to deal with that cracks. Oh. But yeah, I I like seeing other people's processes, so I kind of wanted to to challenge myself to demystify part of the the idea of ooh how is that made it's like well i fiddle with it until i'm happy with it or not and here's here's how i plan and here's what i was thinking about when i started doing it All right you trim trim this down where's my sharp thing there's my sharp thing Because it kind of, kind of follows the contour of the, of the body more. It, it's not a, a big flipper exactly. There we go. These can be legs in a minute. 
So yeah, I'm here for I'm here for you. I will make mistakes while you watch, so that you know that that's how life is. <laughs> that we are none of us perfect, and that the act of creating is a process that requires thought and creativity all the way through, not just a mechanical process of seeing a thing in your head and then following rules to produce it. I will say that frequently the art that I like best to work on, not even necessarily the art that I like the way it turned out best, but just the art that I enjoy the process of the most, has a tendency to be art that I did not have a really clear, really confident visual plan for starting. Because I find that frequently, if you have a very, very clear, very specific vision for something, it becomes very difficult to let go of the parts of that vision that just aren't going to work. And it can feel like failure if you don't make that exact thing that you started out with sort of in mind. Whereas if you have like a vague concept and you just sort of start from that, then... Uh, Then when you see, you say you're not disappointed, but it's it's more than that. It's it's allowing yourself to not become too attached to a thing that was never going to work in the first place. It's because a thing that our brains do really well, um, and you can find this really well in dreams. Our brains fill in gaps of things that don't make sense really, really well. Um, you can have most of a clear image in your head, but the bits of it that don't work, you've, you've just made work with sort of imagination. Your brain just goes, that, that's, it, was, it was perfect in my head, but it, it wasn't. You just hadn't seen... The, the actual reality. So there's an element of of being willing to let go of your sort of it's that kill kill your kill your darlings kind of thing. Yes, it's the, that's it. It's the, it's you have a feeling of of how of how the bits that you haven't really worked out in your head will look. And so you're sure that you're right. And you have to be willing to let go of some of those preconceived ideas while you're making the thing. Or, or you won't end up solving problems that you run into while you're making it. And then you'll sort of be stuck with this idea that you can't execute no matter what. And that's always going to be a disappointment. Okay, I need to get his little head up off the table there. Yeah. And uh and anyway, yeah, that that is that is what I've come to um in my attempts to understand why it's so easy to get angry at something you're trying to finish when it doesn't quite match your perfect ideas. It's because your perfect ideas weren't perfect. You just imagined they were perfect because that's a thing our brains are for. Really good. Oh, it's, it's one of the reasons that I'm a terrible writer, honestly. It's because I can't bridge that. I want to tell stories, but I can't bridge that, that gap between I've summarized a story for you and told you the good bits 
And I have written a whole story that is edited together and makes sense and flows and has progression because I, I don't, I never, I never had those bits in between in my head. I just, I just glossed them over because I didn't care when I was inventing the story. It's kind of why I like role playing because then someone else fills in all those gaps, whether I'm a player or the game master. Yes, the joiny up bits of writing, exactly, Sesafet. Those bits, the in-between bits. Um, I've heard writers call it the work, that's the work of writing, is the, uh, is the in-between bits. And I am just, I'm not great at the, at the hard part. And the hard part is the part that makes a thing work, usually. Um, that's just how how life is exactly the players when you're when you're when you're running a, a role-playing game your players are making up all of those in-between bits that you didn't have any idea they'll always come up with something weird that you didn't think of they'll always come up with something else to do that that you go oh no that's a that's a better story that was yeah that's that's a better idea let's let's do that and then you're saved from having to write all of the in-betweeny bits. I mean, you can skip the boring bits in books to an extent as well. It's just knowing which bits are boring. Um, because pacing is really important. Like, I remember writing an outline for a comic with, uh, with my sister. And there were all these sections in the outline where I would read through it and I would be like, oh, the pacing doesn't work. And I would just add, you know, add, add a bit while we, while we get there. Um, because sometimes you, you just, the bits that you found most interesting or that you had a clear idea of don't work by themselves without other bits to pace them out. Like you can't have a bunch of small climaxes in a row. You have to, to figure out how to pace the whole story. Um, so I'm an I'm a, I'm a okay editor and a bad writer. Um, and, uh, and I've started to just kind of accept that. <laughs> um, trying to figure out where the best place to work for this camera is. I guess right around here. Anyway, um, I like storytelling, but I'm, I'm bad at writing the in-between bits of, of stories. Which is why I sort of enjoy like improv telling bits of stories out loud on the stream instead. Because then I'm never held accountable for what happens next. Or the details, or the in-between bits. But I've always loved stories, and it's that's why I became an animator, because I love telling stories. And moving pictures are fun. All right, we have kind of, let's do a side view. There we go. We have kind of a, a, a tad, a tad pull critter here. Now, it's... I have more of a, oh, you know what? I'm looking at this picture and I'm seeing the problem. They have kind of a, 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 a back fin that keeps going. So, so a back fin that like goes down the length of the, of the back and has it, it's a bit more domey shaped. They kind of go, whoop. Yeah, okay. We shall fix it. We shall fix it like this. By adding clay and hoping that that clay doesn't 
fail to adhere. <laughs> There we go. So anyway, now you know why I like demanding that you guys have have input in in all of the the weird story decisions and like improv storytelling that goes on in here. Makes it easier. <laughs> Saved from having to work up all the details. Um, that's not entirely true. I just enjoy what other people come up with, and I enjoy including people. It's not. It's not just. It's not just to save me from having to tell you a whole story. Um, yeah, there's something. There's something joyful about co-creating stuff, um, and I, there's something more interesting. I think about about everyone feeling included and being a part of something instead of instead of just me being the arbiter of what is happening mm. Mm. Kind of, yeah, there, that feels slightly better. And also, I, it's not just, it's not just about co-creating, it's also about the joy of like coming up with concepts that inspire people to, to do more with them. Um, like, like sheep guana sheep guana fiction and and bird D&D &D. um it's fun it's fun to see other people inspired by a thing and to want to to be creative in that in that scenario in that realm zone i was looking for a word for it and failed so i went with scenario <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, being inspiring is kind of one of the most amazing, rewarding things a person can be making, making someone else feel like they want to do something, want to make something, want to create and participate. is pretty awesome. Mm. Oxalotl. Still still unconvinced of you. Shaving shaving you down a little. Get some. I know I want to put the little gills on too, but they're like the last thing we can ever possibly do because once the gills are on, we basically can't touch it. They're going to be fiddly and fragile, and we're going to need to kind of hold them in space with, you know, props and and bits of things, and uh, and not do anything. Same with the legs. We're gonna we're gonna add those. Those fiddly bits kind of last. So we don't risk having to pick him up after that. Because that will be a problem. I feel like we're okay. You know, I said we were going to add clay for the head, but I'm, I'm not convinced we need to. I'm feeling a little bit okay about about the head it's feeling it's feeling like a good good broad flat head I can 
shape it a little bit. And that we're kind of, it's the size is all right. <laughs> Today's adventure is shaving an axolotl. Yeah, just, just, you know, shaving the fin a little. Just a little. Um, and as with the audio, chat, yell at me if I, if I start to um, pay more attention to you and my hands than I do where I'm holding this on camera. I have a tendency to like just, just drift off camera sometimes if I'm like working on something, so. I'll, I'll try and notice, but yell at me <laughs> if I, if I start to accidentally leave you behind. Oh, cracking again. Cause we want the, I want the tail to curve this way. So I've been kind of trying to support it with this hand so that it doesn't go back the other way and start to crack. Um, What are we gonna, oh, sponge, sponge or this thing, this thing. Wedge. There we go. Just keep him off the floor a little. Another thing, this thing. There we go. Just wedge him, wedge him up into shape here. As I hit my head on the table lamp. <laughs> okay. Some. Now let's see, little faces. Just gonna take a pause to drink some tea and look at their little faces. They have they have pretty great little mouths and kind of little dots for eyes. <laughs> Hannibal Hannibal the oxalotl. Wait, what's it? A, I don't understand. I don't understand the reference, Otenshi 3. You're going to have to explain to me why naming the oxalotl Hannibal uh, is a ripoff. I apologize for my, for my lack of, of appropriate pop culture information. Oh! Now, that's not pop culture information. That's just, you know, the pet names of, of your favorite authors. That's a whole other, that's a whole other esoteric thing. I did not know that Shane and McGuire had an oxalotl named Hannibal. Um, but I approve. Um, I would, I would probably have more aquatic animals. I used to have fish, but the water here is unbelievably horrifying. And it took so much chemistry to ever add water or fill the tank that eventually I got fed up with it. And when my giant cannibal goldfish died, I, uh, I stopped. Oh, oh, auto, auto message. Yes, sorry, Otenshi 3. My hands are covered in clay and I can't, I'm, I'm, I will, I will. I will allow your, there we go. I've, I've permitted, <laughs> permitted your cat name um, through. But fair enough, good to know, good to know that it will, that will, it will automatically flag things. Yes, cannibal goldfish, the story of the cannibal goldfish. Um, I had a friend with a tank full of goldfish, like a, you know, like a big, maybe 200 gallon tank. And uh, this was a, a, a large, um, one of the fancy ones, I think maybe a uh, lion's head, as I remember. Um, anyway, one day, this large fancy goldfish started eating the eyeballs of the other goldfish. Um, just, just the eyeballs. Uh, yeah, and so he had to leave. And my friend was like, I'm trying to rehome a goldfish. Uh, he can't be with other fish. Here's why. And me, being me, was was like, I I will take your cannibal horrifying goldfish. Yes, that that is a thing that I would totally do. 
but yeah, the, the problem with the water here is that it comes out of the tap with an extremely high pH. But if you leave it to sit for maybe 20 minutes, it crashes to the lowest of low pHs. And I can't account for this weird jump, but it, it means that not only must you wait for the water to settle, but you have to then do an enormous amount of chemistry every time you want to add water to the fish tank. Um, but but my, my cannibal my cannibal goldfish lived a lived a good a good long life in in a in a 75 gallon tank in my house all by himself with no friends to eat um, and I may have also called him Hannibal although I, I more often than not just called him cannibal goldfish Um, but that amount of chemistry convinced me that I simply did not have the time and patience to deal with with creating a, a sustainable aquatic environment in my house. Oh no, feeder goldfish. They are used for feeding goldfish. No. <laughs> I mean, you know, I didn't, I didn't want him to, to have any friends to murder. I'm really happy with this curve of the tail, but now I, I have a problem. I have to put a face on him, and I've left him sitting while I delicately fixed. Okay, good, good. I've, I've, I've let it sit enough that the tail is starting to, to firm a little. I don't have to freak out about, about ruining everything. Yay. Yeah, I, I'm, I have a lot of plants, and I'm kind of good with plants, um, because if I really screw up and they die, I'm, I'm, I'm sad, but I haven't, like, murdered a living thing in quite the same, in quite the same way. Um, and I like, I like having a cat who doesn't really require a lot from me in order to, to carry on. Except for this morning when he was super angry that I fed him chicken instead of fish and I thought you were just gonna have to listen to him cry through this whole stream. But I bribed him with cat treats and it seems fine now. Yeah, actually being a gardener requires a certain amount of attrition uh, because you'll just put plants in the wrong place or you'll get a plant that doesn't, that doesn't work for where you put it or your soil or yeah it, there's a lot of there's a lot of failure in gardening and you just kind of accept that as part of it i mean i don't think so here's here's my here's my gardening rant um is that I I don't think anyone actually has a black thumb. Um, I think that largely it's just how much time and effort people are willing to put into plants um, and how much research they do for the plant they have before they get it. Um, and it's perfectly acceptable for any research to be too much research. <laughs> That's fine. Um, but there's no like you didn't you didn't just fail at plant ownership like something happened <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't cosmic it wasn't you okay otenchi 3 um i don't have i i'm sorry I don't have a comeback for sometimes I turn book pages green. Fair enough, you're a mutant, and I'm sorry that you kill plants. <laughs> I, I, it must be it must be quite the burden that you that you have to bear with your mutation.
I, I can't I can't help I can't help the toxic hands. Um, but yeah, basically, a huge part of gardening, at least gardening outside, is is getting plants that work for the place that you live, because. If you're getting plants that don't work for the place that you live, that's when you're setting yourself up for like next level gardening. Like, ooh, I'm going to need a greenhouse. Ooh, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need that. I'm going to need to bring them in and put them in this location. I'm going to need to overwinter them in the basement or something. If you're if you're willing to do that, sure. But uh, but you shouldn't. Ha I mean, you know, you don't have to be willing to do that. You can uh, you can choose not to. Um, like, you know, oh, I, no, that's, that's a, I've decided that whole thing about mint is a myth. I've killed every mint plant I've ever owned. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Everyone's like, don't plant mint, it'll get everywhere. And I'm like, well, I put it in a pot and now it's dead. Like, don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Just, uh. just failed to thrive. And you know, what can you do? To be fair, I don't like mint that much anyway. So there. Yeah, that's the thing, like mint is, mint is supposed to be fine. Mint is supposed to be indestructible. Um, Meanwhile, I have a finicky rose bush that's just great, um, and I've killed, I think now, three mint plants. Every once in a while I put a new one in, just thinking, maybe it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You and me, we're going to have to defend the world from, uh, from the encroaching mint. In the invasive plant wars to come. Oh... Let's get a good side view here. Oh, support the tail, support the tail. <laughs> Must always be supporting tail with left hand. Death to the minty oppressors. It's uh I don't even really like mint tea, y'all. And that's I know, I I love tea. I like things steeped in hot water, but mint mint I do not enjoy. I do not enjoy mint tea. I sometimes enjoy some fresh mint dropped into some other kind of tea, but only sometimes. Um, do I ever use internal structures, uh, for sculptures, Sassafet? Um, because the answer is yes, sort of, but also, um, there's a lot to talk about there with, uh, ceramics. So, uh, I want to make sure that's what you were asking before I launch into a, into a technical explanation. Do I want to be sure? Maybe I'll just launch into a technical explanation. Um, that seems fine. So for um, for ceramics sculpture, most internal structures are not viable because they will cause problems in firing. So for example, if I had aluminum wire in here, the, the temperature at which aluminum would cause issues is within the temperature that the kiln heats to. So they'll expand at different rates, the metal will melt, the thing will crack. Sometimes you can use um, things like paper in um, an internal structure because that will burn away as long as you have um, as long as you have some sort of hole that it will vent through. But it's kind of frowned on to do that in a kiln where you're you're firing things with a bunch of people um, because that paper burning will change the atmosphere inside the kiln and could change other people's outcomes. 
so it's 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 rude basically um, so in general no in general what you do with ceramics is you use external um, structures or you use very simple internal structures and then once you reach leather hard you cut your piece apart um, you carefully cut it into like I might cut like say you know I might cut the easiest place for this would be probably you know like here-ish at like a diagonal and then you'd scoop out the inside remove the internal structures while it was the clay was stiff enough to still have to support itself and then you'd stick it back together I personally don't enjoy doing that I prefer to uh, to wing it <laughs> with with just props on the outside and no and no structure at all um, if I ever do anything big and crazy and weird I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to work out some structures I have some ideas for example I've got some uh, some balloons to try and use blow up a balloon for an internal space put some paper or plastic around it and then pierce it with like a needle tool um, and then it can be pulled out so some experiment I have some have some experiments to do with some larger pieces but for stuff for stuff that I can hold in my hand or even the octopus that we did a while ago now um, that was sort of you know yay big I just use external supports so like I've got um, like cardboard tubes around um, cups that kind of just things to prop it up so that it's held into place but yeah don't put metal in the kiln don't don't do it there's wire that you can get specifically that you can fire but it's a very specific thing so if I'm not using if I'm not firing if I'm using Sculpey for example I always use internal structures um, if for no other reason than because it makes them bake better hey Hannah um, so like somewhere around here I have let me see if I can it's probably just to the side yep there it is I've got the beginning of that of that chameleon that I still haven't finished in uh, Sculpey and it's got you can see no focus you can see it's got like aluminum foil inside to hold it its shape so let's see I think we're ready for I think we're ready for face uh oh still cracking now we're now we're cracking around the around the throat poor oxalotl we're gonna have a lot of cleanup on this one I can tell um, so let's let's see here just cup there like that now let's see oxalotl face he's got little eyes like there and there and then like a happy little mouth like that and then yeah and then he's got little like that's technically I guess hmm, mouths the mouths are interesting I don't know how they actually work I assume they open quite large but they've got this little little like happy face in front and then I guess they kind of go like that maybe that looks right ish <laughs> right enough um, or or and this is this is a thing that we might just do or or we could just just give him a, a little a little happy face hmm I don't know I don't know what do we think little little happy face too cartoony
It's, they they do they just they they have this little. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna start with. We're gonna start with with the little happy front mouth. Camera, I swear to you, I swear to you. I swear. I swear I will sell you on eBay camera if you don't learn to focus. <laughs> little happy smile and then the eyes. I, I, there, little. Yeah, just it and it. That's the. Oh, uh, well, that eye looks a little bit not round enough. There we go. That's the. Um, that's the eye. The official eye poking noise. It. And then, the middle of his head needs to be kind of flat. It's kind of a there we go. Look at that little happy face. Now, a friend of mine was talking to me. And uh and suggested that 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 the mouth should be open wide enough so that the oxalotl can hold incense. Um, just because, of course. So I'm going to open it up just a little bit. Um, and give it, give it a little bit more of an open, of an open smile. Yeah, he's metamorphosizing out of a tadpole and into and into a, a, a grown a grown oxalotl. Oh happy look at that happy little oxalotl face. Oh, let's see, what's what's the size of incense, I wonder? Maybe like that. That seems seems workable. Me. <laughs> okay. Happy little. I don't. I don't want to belabor the face because, like, what's the point? It's. It's got. It's got a tiny mouth and dots for eyes, and like that's. That's its charm. Don't overcomplicate things. What I do want to do though is sort of it's they've got kind of like a ribbed a ribbed body and I want to kind of get some details in here. And sort of tidy those up. Oh, still got that crack there. Every time I let go of the tail. Um, he, H Hannah, the, uh, the oxalotl will, will be, will be up for, up for sales. Most, most generally stuff I do live on stream is, is, uh, is for sales. Um, cause, uh, cause a girl's got to make a living. Um, but also because I, I kind of feel like people that have watched it be made may have a, a vested interest in in taking it home. And if I start out kind of going, well, this isn't for you guys. 
it's a little bit less, I don't know, exciting, maybe. He needs ribs on the other side. Oh no, now I have to make them match. Oh dear. So there, and there, and there, and there, and there, and there. Okay, cool. Just so that they look like, oh no, <laughs> no, mistakes have been made. Eh, do I, do I, do I care though? Do I care that mistakes have been made? Yeah, no, it feels that they should go the other way. This way. This is the way of the curve. There we go. Get those, those like, I don't know, gills, ribs, folds. Look, I have pictures in front of me. Just, just, just going by what I see. Ah, this little break is driving me insane. Kind of rip repair. Okay. Repair the fin break. Of course there's an oxalotl Pokemon. Of course. Um, I suspect that uh that we're that 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 my that my chat is is excited about uh Sword and Shield. Feels like a thing that my, that my chat might be excited about. Um, I am here making an Oxalotl with you all instead of instead of playing a, a Star Wars Jedi first player, single player computer game. So just just know just know the depths of my love for you. Oh no, Pokemon burned out. That's a terrible game title. No one wants to play Pokemon Burned Out. All right. Feeling I'm feeling pretty pretty good about our very large Oxalotl here. Oxalotls get pretty large though, right? I don't I don't know that I've seen enough Oxalotl to have a, a size comparison in person. But I don't know. This feels this feels like a justifiable size. Pokemon anxiety and Pokemon depression. Also, also not not big sellers. Not 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 big sellers of Pokemon games. Not a not a huge not a huge fan favorite is is Pokemon anxiety. I feel, I feel like I feel like Pokemon depression is just what happens when you start to read all of the actual Pokemon uh, descriptions. <laughs> Oxalotl legs. So I looked at a bunch of pictures of Oxalotls, you all, and uh, and as far as I can tell, the number of toes they have appears to be completely random. Uh -huh. I have a picture of one with six toes. Uh, four, four in the front and five in the back. Um, just, just a completely random number of toes. So, so to simulate this, we're just gonna give them however many toes I feel like when I give them a foot. <laughs> that's, uh, that's how I've decided to deal with this, with this weird toe issue.
is to just to just splay out that foot and then I'll just separate it into as many toes as I want. I would definitely play play Pokemon Famine, War, Pestilence, and Death, like P Pokemon Apocalypse. I do not want to play Pokemon Existential Dread. Um, or Pokemon How Is It November. I didn't I didn't really uh yeah, how is it November? How is it 2019? Uh what what has happened? Why does time insist on continuing to go move faster and faster instead of slower and slower? Those are all those are all failed Pokemon games. Little little Oxalotl. But that's okay because look at this adorable little Oxalotl and his little Oxalotl feet. Okay, I'm gonna put this bring it out bring it out my my favorite thing. Setting things on a wet sponge to uh to try and because this clay, while I really enjoy the color and I like the sort of the the grog texture in it. It's uh it's it's got a tendency to be a little bit cracky and to dry a little bit fast. Okay chat. Now that we have Pokemon Famine War Pestilence and Death, I need you to design a Pokemon for each because obviously you pick one, it's like, you know if you if you play if you play famine you get the famine pokemon if you start with the fan pokemon etc and so forth so so i i feel it's important that we that we clarify what the uh, what the thematically appropriate pokemon are Yeah, yeah, that's right, chat. Figure out legendary Pokemon for the Pokepocalypse. Pokepocalypse. Oh, thank you, Joan of Snark. Pokepocalypse is clearly the name of the overall uh, overall release that we are describing. That's definitely true. It's definitely the Pokepocalypse. That just rolls right off the tongue. A skeleton rat. Um, oh, let's see. Um, Hannah, a rat, a rat bone pun. Quickly, you're my go-to. You're my go-to pun, pun chatter. I know. I'm sorry. I put you on the spot. I apologize. That's very unfair and 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 horrifying of me. Protent. I don't know. I don't know what what that is, but I I am scared of it. I'm scared of rodentist. Hmm. Let's see. Oh God, no, Hannah, why? <laughs> oh yes, our craft. Oxalotls are named after is a lotl. So, so yeah, that's that's a thing. I feel like yeah, I feel like I feel like the adorable little skeletal rat is one of the Pokemon where like you like it at first and then its evolutions happen and you're like, oh, oh, I liked you better when you were small. Why why do you exist this way? Okay. I need to I need to put these feet on. But I also need to give it little give it little folds. Oh, I need a smaller. A smaller tool. I'm just going to use all of the sculpting tools on this leg. Tooth fair Oh no. Okay. Okay. I I uh, I brought this on myself. I uh, I caused the creation of a uh, of rodentist tooth fair at and uh, 
and uh, a sack of a sack of uh, a sack of rats and teeth and murder, didn't I? I should have known. Should have known what I was what I was getting myself into. <laughs> okay, okay, no. So here's here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do, Hannah. You and I are gonna multi stream. Um We're gonna multi stream we're gonna multi stream the the poke apocalypse. That's what's gonna happen. Um I don't know. I don't know when, but we're definitely we're definitely gonna gonna multi stream, drawing drawing the most horrible Pokemon, the world has yet seen. I don't know why I've gotten myself into this because I don't actually play Pokemon. <laughs> um, I don't I don't dislike them as a design. I just don't like the gameplay. <laughs> so, but yeah. Yeah, the poke apocalypse is happening. I don't, I don't have to. Yeah, I um, I may have said as I may have said before on stream, uh, Magikarp is my is my favorite Pokemon. Not not anything that Magikarp evolves into. Just just Magikarp. I love I love that Magikarp is just a, a clearly suffering fish. It's just yeah, just magic art in different hats. Yeah, this is uh, just just magic art in different hats. Okay, okay, Oxalot. No, I think I'm just gonna have to support him like this, and I think I'm going to be creative. Okay, just gonna. Crouch down, kneeling on the floor in front of here. Let's see, where do his little legs go? There, kinda. And then, and then there. Yep. Mm, no, if because it. Hmm. Hmm. Feels like they kind of go out, and they're. I see what's happened. I see. We just need we need them to be slightly shorter. Is what's going on. Aha. Because shorter is more adorable. Everyone knows. It's uh There we go. Yeah, that's that's my dark secret. Besides besides the dark secret that came out on Twitter earlier, which is haiku, um, <laughs> is uh, my dark secret. So my favorite Pokemon is Magikarp, um, and I have I have no 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 love or feelings for any other Pokemon. It's just it's just Magikarp. What can I say? It's just how it is. Yes, my my uh, my sheep guana bordello haiku. Yeah, um, my 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 secret history as a as a haiku writer. Yeah, I just I love Magikarp. What can I say? He's he's the best. And it feels there we go. Just right up, right up there. Just squidge those on. And then kind of out to the, maybe, maybe in a little bit. There, that's, oh, no, I think, hmm, back some, and then like that. 
Hmm? Yeah, he's got he's got little and then his little gills are gonna, you know, go go right along here and attach. But I gotta get I gotta get his his feet. On. Ah, <laughs> Evie. Ah, uh, yeah. I. What can I say? I'm. I like. I. I also kind of like the one that's just like a Pikachu drawn on a sack. <laughs> like I like. I like the uh, the particularly strange ones. Just by virtue of them being strange. Yes, mim mim you. I uh I love I love just that someone came up with that. That's that's kind of my favorite thing about a lot of Pokémon is that someone was like, "Oh, we should do this." And everyone was like, "Oh, yeah, we should definitely do that super weird thing you just talked about. That would be perfect." And no one stops them or even questions. <laughs> Okay, let's yeah, Mim Mimikyu, Mimikyu just wants to be loved, exactly. Okay, make sure those feet are on good. Put you back down on your little support log now that you really need it because you're because your delicate wobbly feet and make sure you prop your little chin up again okay now now do this in a way that that works we need to separate his little feet am i still on camera i'm still on camera i'm gonna adjust my light though I think because I feel like ooh, what if I did this that's better it's because I feel like my shadow is getting very hard so cut little toes how many toes one Two, four, four toes is how many toes? Oops. Oh, I stopped paying attention to chat for a minute and now there's weird monkeys? What? Oh, we're talking about Pokemon still. <laughs> Should be. Yes. Okay, carry on. I just need to, I need to do some fiddly, some fiddly bits with toes. Okay. Oh, where's my, there's my sponge. And toes. So, uh, so we were, were we, were we, uh, were we clear, were we clear on not, on not stealing Shannon McGuire's Oxalotl name? Um, did we still need to name the Oxalotl? Um, because, uh, Because I don't know, I don't know if I want to explain explain on Twitter why we've stolen someone's pet name. Although I suppose it's a it's an honor. The name the name was Hannibal, was the name that was suggested. Uh, that that is the name of 
of a famous axolotl. Um, but yeah, the thing, the thing about axolotl is that it's, uh, it's good for, it's good for, for combination puns. It's, uh, Hannibal, Hannibal is a, is is an is it as an attractive a, a particularly attractive oxalotl? Um, and I don't I don't want to I don't want to give this oxalotl a uh, a complex about trying to live up to that. I don't want him to feel to feel bad about himself or anything. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I broke his tiny toe. Gotta fix the toe. That's what I said when I the the sand makes very small things tricky. Is because that means there's less of the sort of sticky clay substance as binder making small pieces when they're wet more likely to break because they're a little bit more brittle less flexible Oh no. Okay. Fixed his little toes. We're just gonna sort of dampen. We're gonna dampen them as I. I would name him Axe Boy. <laughs> oh dear. Um. So, so what, like, Hannibal makes a good allotl combination? Maybe something like Maxolotl? Max, 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 a lot. All it's, it's, you know. Oh, that crack is still driving me insane. But I don't have enough hands to fix it. And hold, okay. Delicately making little hands, and and my camera doesn't want you to see. Ma yes, ma Max, a lot. is is maximum a lot. Sort of like Maximilian, but. But a lot else. Maximilian or Maxwell or There's no or that's all I could think of and then I just trailed off. <laughs> Sorry. Get some some better attachment here. I'm a little bit worried about this coming off. Okay. Okay. He has feet. He has legs. He has feet. He has legs. Um, what we are going to do putting those feet down is we are going to add back legs quickly um, just 
and some water there. Um, because then I'm going to leave him to set just a little bit while I make some tea and take a break when hell of his legs are on. Because as I said, I want to be very careful putting his little gills on, and I think we want to do that after we're pretty sure that he's good. Yeah, I think I think maybe we'll just go with the pronouns they them their their gills after we get their little feet on. Um so Hannah, uh Glaze. I talked about Glaze right when I started, um, and I will talk about it again. David Atten, Atten Blottle? No, it's David Atten Bertolottle. Atten Bertolottle. Atten Bertolottle. Yeah, Atten Bertolottle. That's a little bit much, but that's definitely that's definitely the correct uh, the correct pronunciation. Bert Bertolottle. Bertolottle's pretty good. Um, got a little, cause his back leg, back, the back legs have little bitty tops and bigger, thicker bases. Is this going to be about, cause the front legs are technically supposed to be smaller. I don't know, whatever. We'll see what happens when I cut this in half. You've got a little, and then a little feet. Eh, seems fine. <laughs> seems fine. Going with it. I'm trying to think of more a lot of names. Sam, Sam a lot of. Well, now I'm just going to hand a lot. Dot a lot. I like dot a lot. That's got a, a nice, a nice bounciness to it. Um, I like, I like can a lot too, actually. It's also kind of got a a beat to it. Oh no, Fro Frodolotl. Uh, Samolotl and Frodolotl. Brave the fires of Mount Doom. All right. Wait. 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 <laughs> How 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 do how do legs work? That way. That's how. That's how. Yes. Thusly is is how is how legs work. And where are they? They're kind of just at the la yeah, like 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 before the bend. There. Like that. That feels ish. It feels correct ish. He's got kind of large legs, but I mean they have to hold up his his whole his whole little oxalot body. So you know. So that seems fine. He's kind of, so let's, if he's curved, I think this foot closer, this foot farther out. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe that foot closer. Maybe that foot farther out. 
This is what happens when you let animators sculpt. I'm like, I don't know. How is he moving? Like that? I don't know. A, li a little, little, little waddle. A little, I, I kind of like a little waddle. Except he's quite a large waddle. <laughs> In reality. Yeah, you're right. Outer leg, outer leg in to f stick with the flow of the flow of the allotl. Keep the the motion of the curve. In, in the feet and the legs. But let's see now. Now let's, I probably should have done a little bit more shaping when I was holding it up in the air before I attached the legs, but it's too late now. What's done is done. We're just gonna have to gonna have to to deal with what we've what we've got. Make the best of what we've done. A big lot. That sounds like big lots, which is silly. Get him a little a little fold. Little little leg fold here because the details are important. And then toes, toeses. Get some toeses. I'm gonna do them slightly differently this time and see if it helps. It does help. I think he has, I think he has five toes though. Yep. Yep. Turns out he has five back toes. Who knew? Well, this was much easier and a much better solution to that problem. <laughs> um, ah, speaking of Twitter links. I learned I learned while promoting this stream that there's there's just a a a, a oxalotl bot on Twitter that just that just retweets oxalotl, which is sort of genius. Actually, I'm going to use that I'm going to use that concept to clean this up a little bit. I want them to have pointier toes because they have such delicate little pointy toes. Sorry, chat. I'm, I'm trying to use a knife at a weird angle. Just gonna be quiet for a second. While I carefully, oh, carefully trim oxalotl toes. There we go. There's. Oh, it's good. It's good that 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 animals have their own. Uh, Okay, now I need to, I'm just going to hope that this works. Feels like it basically did, so yay. Nothing bad seems to have happened as I rotated the oxalotl. I mean, yeah, now that I think about it, of course there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of uh, animal bots on Twitter. 
Of course. What better... What better thing to retweet? Okay. Poodle Oh. <laughs> oh no. I like Poodle Putu Poodle Um but I but I like I like the uh the Putu. The mouse kind of lineup. Uh I'm sorry, I'm sorry that we are distressing you with our puns, Otenchi. I, uh... I'm afraid, I'm afraid that I'm, that I'm being very pun supportive today. Um... Because, because of the, the joy it brings me to say a lot, really. So... So I'm enabling, I'm enabling all these, all these allotal puns. I apologize for any dismay that may cause. Get that. I mean, Poodle So Poodle has that same. It's just it's the cadence of it. It has that same sort of joy as like Oodle You know, it it just it it feels feels like it's a good cadence to say. I forget why I picked this tool up. Oh yeah, I remember now fix that line. Yes. <sighs> yeah, you read Oodalali. Oodalali. Oodalali golly what a day. Because, um, because as we all know, the best Robin Hood movie is the one with foxes. A truth universally acknowledged. Okay, where's my little paintbrush? There's my little paintbrush. Time for time for paintbrush wetting things. The secret to, to smoothing out details I've learned is this tiny paintbrush that I can't remember where I got. I feel like someone gave it to me. I feel like it just showed up in some toolbox or something. And and I stole it with permission, so not stealing. <laughs> exactly. But it's a really it's a really handy little clay brush. Totally stole it on accident. I don't yeah, I don't remember. I I I feel like I would have I would have asked about it, but I can't guarantee that fact. I do know that I did not purchase it at a store where one purchases paintbrushes. Its provenance is, is vague and unknown. But it's really good for, for clay. Let me get the little toes. Oh dear. There we go. Little toes. I don't know how I'm gonna get this this fifth toe up from under here. Oh let's see. If we I may have to, to, to use a new tool. Yep, we'll go with this. And hope for the 
best. There we go. All right, I'm uh, I'm pretty pleased right now with uh, with where our oxalotl is. Feeling pretty good about his little feet and his body shape and his twisted fin tail. And uh, and I want to kind of just I'm gonna prop his head up a little bit more. Oops, mess up his feet as I do, of course. Um, which is why I kind of wanted to just get these in and then let him set for a minute. So, oh, one more detail. Let's add one more detail. We need a little, little fold here in his little leg where he's got it folded in. There we go. Okay. So, it's a... Uh, it's been about two hours. We're we're pretty solidly in there. I feel like we're gonna we're gonna finish an oxalotl. We probably won't finish the second oxalotl I was threatening to make, but we might have time to start him. Uh, I think I got distracted, but when I was gonna talk about glaze, uh, this is a red clay. I'm gonna glaze it with a white clay, so the red clay will show through and give it that ideally pinkish tint. We'll see how well that works. But right now, I'm gonna take a quick break, um, make some more tea and let these little toes set to make them a little bit less fragile. And I will be back really quickly. Let's uh, see if I can find a... Oh, Hannibal, Hannibal is a very, very fancy oxalotl. Okay. I don't have enough screens to make that work. So, we're just going to put up the break time picture. And I will be back in just a few minutes. See you then.
and back. There we go. Oh, tusks. Tusks or fangs on the axolotl, I see, while I've been gone. Very exciting. I just testing the little toeses. Sort of a general sense of the voxelotl here. Get some. Okay. Yeah. Now I think I think he's sturdy enough that I can give you some good angle views here. A oh, little happy face. So, oh, let's let's we may want to differentiate this more. Oh, later. Get some. Oops. Failing. There we go. Just a reminder to sort of help differentiate that tail, but. I feel like I feel like we're pretty pretty oxalotl e um pretty pretty successfully oxalotl so I'll put him down over here and prepare for the final bit which involves gills. So I'm going to take some clay and just kind of do, wet it a little bit, and do kind of a flat slab with just my hands. You can hear the, the exciting noise of of clay slapping. I, I could roll it a little, I guess. Do I have a... Mm, rolling pin is very large. I'm not sure. Not sure this will... Oh, it will be fine. It will be fine. That feels better. Okay. Just... Yeah, I just have a rolling pin next to my desk. What of it? Okay. There we go. Hey, it's all on camera, y'all. It's all on camera. You saw the clay. Okay. Now. That yay wide, and then flare to yeah okay. So just gonna kind of there's three gills. and I want them to. to be kind of uniform. But they they kind of they get smaller as they go downwards shorter, I guess not necessarily smaller. It's uh, my 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 magical clay exacto. Yeah, I don't, a lot of people cut clay entirely with the needle tool, which is this sharp little pin tool that my camera doesn't want you to look at. Anyway, I find that it tears the clay a little bit more than I want usually, 
So when I do something really delicate or I want a really clean line, I use uh, just an X-Acto knife. I have another X, I have, oh, I have a, I have a clean paper X-Acto knife as well. <laughs> that is, that is separate from the, uh, from the clay X-Acto knife. So let's see, then three, because it's got kind of, it's got frills and we want space for, for frill making. So, so right now it kind of looks like the, uh, like the wings on a cartoon biking helmet, but that's fine. Not a, not a cartoon biking helmet, a cartoon Valkyrie helmet. I don't know the ones that the opera singers wear in cartoons. I guess that would be Valkyries. You know, because the opera. Yeah, that 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 specific cartoon, in fact, <laughs> um, which I guess is based on based on Wagner's The Valkyries. So. So yeah, Valkyries. That was a tangent. <laughs> um, an opera tangent. The uh, the excellent topical content you come here to view. Fluffy. Okay. It's kind of kind of getting there in in the the gill sense. It's scale is a little bit it feels big, but I think I'm gonna need the extra clay. So um yeah, right now, right now, I'm I'm deciding how I'm going to do these gills. Um, I kind of want it to have separation, so so you know. Oh dear. No, no. Let's let's all let's all think about the feathery bits instead. I don't know if that's better, but it sounds more charming. So, so the thing is they kind of have, they kind of have like a tine, you know, down the middle. And then, and then feathery, and then feathery edges. So, okay, chat. Let's rain. Let's rain it in. <laughs> it's uh. Let's think. Let's because they're associated. Oh, the Valkyries are associated with swans. Well, that makes sense. Swans are huge jerks, <laughs> as everyone knows. So, so I hope that we've all learned something today about both Valkyries and opera in this axolotl sculpting stream. So right now I'm kind of taking the same approach as I did with the, with the tail, because that makes sense, right? If I've already done it once, I should do it again. Does it does it feel a little bit? Still feel it feels a little bit maybe long. Might might need to might need to shorten these down a little bit. That's a little bit better. Well, night, Sassifet. Thanks for joining. I'm sorry. I'm hard on your time zone. It's uh it's 
kind of meant to be the, the, the mid-ground and ideally the, the best of most worlds. So, also it's like the best time for me to do it, personally. So there's a little bit of a, you know, selfish, selfish self-interest in there as well. As is, as is only fair. Okay. Let's see. It's still, now see that feels like an enormous like wing thing. Let's squidge it some. V vested self-interest. Well, well-dressed, well-dressed dapper self-interest. Getting, so I'm going to look at this little picture here. Let's see. A little, a little fr long frond is about from the distance to the, okay, so that's about right, actually. That's, that's about, about the distance into the pictures. So, so I'm okay with scale. Here we go. Get some, because that's going to need to attach. Oh, okay. The definition of vested self-interest, I assume. <clears throat> According to what is copied and pasted in chat. Vested interests a personal stake or involvement in undertaking or state of affairs, especially one with an exceptional with the expectation of financial gain. Banks have a vested interest in the growth of their customers. A person or group having a personal stake or involvement. The problem is that the authorities are a vested interest. Law, an interest usually in land or money held in trust, recognized as belonging to a particular person. Yeah, it's it's got it's got a little bit of that. The the description of a uh, of Temeraire's rough brought me strongly to mind, of like. So it uses the word tendrils, and it, it 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 sort of brought me to mind of like oxalotl gills, something something newt like and aquatic, as opposed to as opposed to something more like mammalian, like not hair or antlers, but tendrils. And that just, you know, tendrils or tendrils, they're, they're gill-like, octopus, newt-like. Not horns or antlers or fangs or anything like that. Okay. I feel like I've so that will stick on sort of there and go back like that. Now the question is do I want I kind of feel like I don't. I feel like I better leave it sturdy when I put it on. I realize I didn't finish that whole thought for you out loud. Um, so let's start again. Should I cut the, the little gill feathering now? And the answer that I came upon is definitely not, do not do that thing. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut them and feather them 
um, and do some texture and kind of have it be a combination, I think, of like visual texture, you know, like, like that. Oh, camera, show the thing. This camera does not love me, but visual, visual texture. <sighs> camera, um, visual texture, and then cutting, cutting pieces apart so that it's, it's got, um, it's got textural shape as well as just, okay, no, that's it. That's again, a failed sentence. It has shape as well as texture, textural shape. Uh, that, that sounds like a bullshit term. <laughs> shape and texture both yeah I don't I still haven't my camera and I still aren't really friends oops let's just drop everything that would be fun yes why not um, I wanted I wanted to be friends with my camera I looked for things on the internet to allow me to be friends with my camera and the internet was kind of like, are you on a PC? No? Well, that's really unfortunate, isn't it? And then just kind of stop talking. <laughs> so. Let's get these, these big gill fronds on. Well, somehow not destroying the rest of what I've made. Yes. Attaching to the little ridges. Nice and tidy. Made a little bit of a mess there. We can fix that. It's all fine. Just tidy that up. Oh, don't knock the tail around. Ah, but now, now it's much. The tail is pretty much tail is pretty much firm. It stopped its desire to crack, and now, um, and now is sitting nicely in place. So, it's easier to to fiddle. Oops. Um, while we're while we're underneath here, let's. Let's clean up some toes. I realize that you guys can't, uh, see, like, what really makes me angry about this camera is that sometimes, as I'm moving, it's in perfect focus. And then, and then it just gives up. And I don't know. I don't know how to fix that. I don't know how to fix its little internal brain programming. And I have fears that the answer is get a more expensive camera. But uh, that's not happening. So, just going to have to deal with what we got. All right. Tidy, tidy, tidy. There we go. Oh, lost my paintbrush. There it is. Yes, Tobe. If if ah, uh, oxalotl oxalotl Tobe. Well, they've got tiny little toes, which is almost as good. Okay. Now, I kind of want it to. To to fan out because yeah there we go that's feeling pretty good that's feeling nice and nice and flared and gill like. Now this is what I'm talking about when I say uh, external structures, because to hold that up, I'm going to grab a piece of paper. 
and find. Oh, good! I left my scissors right where I needed them. Good job, past me, and make a little support so his so his gills do not collapse while we while we carry on working on the other side of him. Just something to hold them up because gravity and tension is going to want to pull them down. There. Let's slide this through just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Number two. Have to remember how I did the first one. Let's see. Lines in the middle. Um, I, I get I get plenty of junk mail. Don't you worry. I get junk mail from people who used to live in my house 20 years ago. I get those newspaper ads. I get those Trader Joe's flyer things. I have plenty of junk mail. Also, once I made fun of Discover Card on Twitter, and now once a month I get a Discover Card ad in a different color. So... So I'm set. I'm set for junk mail. <laughs> ah, yes. Discover just every just the weekly the weekly discover card ad. Eventually I'm concerned that I'm gonna get one just to make it stop. Um so what happened? was uh, many, many moons ago, uh, I got a, a sparkly pink Discover Card ad envelope in the mail and uh, and took to Twitter being like, really? A, a girl Discover Card? Really? And Discover was like, in, in, in a reply in Twitter, was like, they come in all the colors. They come in a bunch of different colors. And now... Every week, they sent me a different colored Discover Card envelope advertisement. And it is both hilarious and horrible. Ha! <laughs> yeah, just, just send it all back. So I want every color. Um... But I'm not I'm not sure what about that Twitter interaction made Discover Card go, ah, I see the problem here. <laughs> it's clearly it's clearly that she doesn't know there are other colors. She'll get a Discover card if we send her other colors. It's uh It's just the pink that's the problem. How about green or teal? Or two different kinds of sparkly gold, or I mean, it just—it's—it's it's a never-ending, never-ending adventure of Discover Card envelopes. Oh no! Now you've started getting them. Oh no! We shall never be free. Um, but yeah, the pink envelope, the pink sparkly envelope, just felt so like. A pen for ladies, like that that whole kind of foolishness. Like, ah, the thing you've been waiting for. A credit card that's colored. Oh, no. It's, uh... I mean, I i don't know, I don't know if I've made this clear yet, but orange is my favorite color. Um, and as far as I know, they've never sent me an orange Discover Card ad. So they're really missing the boat there. I have a lot of uh, orange tinted work in my portfolio. I have mostly orange themed marketing stuff. I just really like the color orange. Uh, 
see, but here's the thing. Color, we've, we've gendered colors unnecessarily. If only we could stop, that would be really helpful. But for it to stop, we have to stop universally. Like, I can't say I refuse to believe in gendered colors because that doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, but one day yeah I wear like an eight and a half in men's shoes I don't know can't I can't sympathize with the tiny shoe problem I have enormous feet okay getting the last thing on here Uh, and 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 no one no one person can reclaim the color pink I don't think uh, but certainly certainly it is no one's job to reclaim colors let's all right Are we positioned properly here before I squidge it on? Yeah, that feels right. Gets I actually I really like the color yellow. Um, but I can't wear it because I look terrible in it. But that's okay. Well I can kind of wear dark mustardy yellow. But I'm an artist, so I get to use colors in all kinds of ways. I can... I am, I am of the potentially now unpopular opinion that, that pink and lime green was a good idea. I don't know. I don't know if people still believe that. But there, was a, there was a pink and lime green phase of time. And I thought that was actually a nice combination. Neon screaming everything. Ah, uh, yes. Neon colors. They're a whole different color, really, from their their nearest neighbors. The 80s, when people thought, what if highlighters were clothes? Okay. He's got little gills. And now... Get them to, to stand out some. There we go. Pulled some there we I feel like I feel like maybe the fact the top one is so much longer is weird, but uh, but it's happened now, so, so it is what it is. And we'll just have to, to deal with the consequences. Okay, little, little legs need to make sure that they hit the floor so that we can definitely, ah, yes, prop him up there because he's, Started to droop from the weight of his gills. Okay. Just gonna just gonna be down here. Fiddling. Fiddling with his mouth just a little bit. And not looking up. It's steady hand time. Steady hand in silence. Sorry. 
just want to open and clean up his mouth a little bit so that it doesn't get too too firm before I do. But I don't want to pick him up because I just put those gills on. So I'm I'm eye level with the lip of my desk. There we go. Okay. Oxalotl is pretty much done. At least done, save for things that will require some time drying. Uh, 90s fashion. I was grunge in the 90s for the most part because uh, because it was like the first time women got pockets <laughs> because we could wear cargo pants and there oxalot. Okay, so we've got 30 minutes left. Um, so I could do a number of different things. Chat. Oh, not to interrupt the 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 fashion of our youth. Um, I was only a goth on weekends. Um, and, you know, conventions. It was too much work. Okay, so, I could start... I'm going to stop messing with this camera focus. I could start another oxalotl. Or in the last half hour, I could uh, attempt to sculpt a quail with a, with a top hat on. Uh, as, as was demanded last week when I drew a quail with a top hat on. Either of these things will get made, no matter what you choose. But what you want to watch is what I will do in the next 30 minutes. We need more clothes with tiny animals on them. Okay, I have one vote for quail and top hat. Um, if no one else votes, I'm going to assume that she speaks for all of you. <laughs> because that is, uh, that's how democracy works. Okay, we have a, a second on quail with top hat. I'll take this, this, this uh, ball of clay I have here. And, uh, and start and start to quail. Just my headphones here. Okay. Hmm. Example quail is across the room. That's okay. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I actually, I actually have a quail for uh, for for Shep, um, waiting to send. Uh, uh, so no worries. There's, there's already a quail. I would never, I would never neglect, neglect my duties as bringer of quail. Okay. Uh, quail shape. Quail. <laughs> ah, yes, I meant I meant the vote. Yeah, that's that's true. Well, she was she was the one uh Auntie Shepherd was the one who wanted who wanted the quail in the top hat in the first place. Although um she fairly asserts uh that it is not just her, that it is also Hannah. So, in to be fair, in all things, there are multiple there are multiple quail demanders. Quail, uh, quail love is is not just one person. It's all of you. <laughs> um, I was thinking earlier today about how I would. Turn the uh, the 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 quail it in, 
illustration into an enamel pin because he can't have the mace because it's too detached. I was thinking about making the flames on the sword bigger. And then, uh, and that would, that would sort of offset and attach. I, I still would like to raise quail. Um, stuff has to happen first and I have no idea when that stuff will happen. Um, but I, I, uh, and it's less about quail and more about eggs. I love fresh eggs. I love them. And I can't have chickens. But I can stick quail in a, a little enclosure. And they won't be desperately unhappy. Um, and they won't be eaten by raccoons. So. When, when I discovered that, that quail could live an enclosed life on my deck. They became a an, an egg gull. Because eggs are delicious and I love them. So yes, one day, one day I will have quail. How I will get them, I don't know. Certainly not ordering eggs and incubating them. That's madness. But. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna see if I'm getting any better off with this. Eh. This clay does not like being worked wet because of its sandy graininess. I don't have a local tractor supply. I have to go out. I mean, I'm, I can go up to somewhere like Petaluma, and there will definitely be opportunities to purchase quail, don't you worry. Um, I'm not hugely concerned about, <laughs> about supply. Um, so long as they don't become weirdly trendy while I'm waiting. In which case, I might be screwed. Because that's a thing that sometimes happens. Rare, rare heritage chickens are now weirdly trendy in California. So, so Lord knows what will happen. Quail in the beach. Ah, yes. Okay. This is a very fat quail. Um, because because the hat the hat quail was a very fat quail. I he was a he was a good sturdy little quail. And I want to do right by him. So, making sure that this quail is also good and fat. Our little, our little mesh backpacks, a hipster thing? Is that, that's new. I haven't, I haven't kept up with, uh, With hipster fashion since it moved on from I have beards and man buns and and vintage t-shirts has it have with has it moved on from that is that still part of it oh right the little the little cat yes like a baby carrier for quail A little okay how do you sit you sit like that 
I'll get your quail shape fixed to the ground. The latest hipster fashion. Oh yes, Portland. Portland is Portland is the uh, is the 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 land the land of the hipster. I don't know. As I said, I like Portland. Um, mostly for its uh, for its very nice Chinese garden. I'm a simple person. I know what I like. There's botanical gardens and museums. If you provide me with with some hiking, some botanical gardens, and some museums, I will I will be good with the place that you live. That's all I ask. Um, if have I been to, of course I've been to Daiso. Daiso is where I get all of my glaze paint brushes. Actually, we have oh yeah th we have um I think I can get to like three or four Daisos here pretty easily, possibly more. We're 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 set for Daiso. Here in, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Why would I feel like Portland definitely needs a Daiso? I can't imagine I can't imagine why Portland wouldn't benefit from Daiso. I mean I feel like everyone needs a a a wall of like one dollar rice bowls and office supplies. The best, most amazing office supplies. It's not handcrafted artisanal. I mean that's that's fair. It's not it's not in that it's not in that particular marketing zone. All right, quail. Where's my little I have a feather stamp here somewhere. There it is. My little my little quail feather stamp. Oops. I forgot it's supposed to be it's supposed to be like scales they're supposed to layer oh well that's okay just stamp some feathers in there yeah When in doubt, make your own weird wooden tools. Okay. Well, I mean, Madeira, sure. <laughs> Um, where's the, um, where's the Alhambra? The, uh, the super famous Spanish. Yeah, I, I know the Alhambra is in Spain, but like where, <laughs> what city? Hmm, don't know. I'll Google it later. Nope, I've got to put eyes in the quail. Hard part. Where does the quail dot eyes go? Here. Nope, that feels very wrong. Mistakes have been made. I'm going to have to try and fix that. 
Just cover that up. Never happened. Don't worry. Nothing here to see. Nothing to see here. And Andal Andalusia, yes, there we go. Um, if anybody wants to pay for me to go to Spain to see the Alhambra, I promise to live stream there. <laughs> I know that's uh, it's not a great trade, but uh, but I'll also do some landscape painting. That you could totally have. It's, uh, it just looks really cool. Okay. Let's try this again. There. There. That's better. It's less weird. Okay, good. Good quail eyes are not creepy anymore. Ooh, a horseback riding tour of Spain sounds lovely. Okay, I'm gonna just... Adjust the... There we go. And then let's see, give him some some feather lines because texture. Trying to get to the point. Yes, horseback riding tour of Spain is definitely. It's a thing I would do. Okay. Trying to get to the point where I could put the hat on before time's up. Just gotta. Just gotta make sure he's got all of his little quail details. Yeah, I could be happy just going on a like a world tour of gardens, frankly. <laughs> I also want to go to Morocco someday. That would be really great. Just, yeah. Just generally traveling is amazing. Yeah, but that's, that's the thing. Everybody has their own, like, very specific, esoteric, like, ooh, this is a thing I want to see. In a place. Almost ready for the hat. Almost. I'm going to reach a point where I can sculpt a quail in, like, ten minutes. If I, if I keep if I keep practicing, <laughs> there we go. Okay, quail. Camera, focus on the quail. I swear, swear. To God. Come on. All right, quail now needs a hat. So. Let's take a little bit of clay. Uh, hmm. Now, 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 how are we going to make the hat? What's what's the appropriate? Because I, I could make it just solid, or I could make a little, a little, um, 
a little slab hat. But then I'd have to have some sort of vent hole for it to. Okay, solid, solid hat, basically. Solid hat starting with a flat circle. Mm, prescribable to our view. It's just. But see then, and then there are all the places that, I, that I've been that I'd like to go back to. Um, like Vienna and, and Munich and Prague. Those were all really fun. Let's see. Oh, let's live dangerously and roll this with a exacto knife. What could go wrong? See, everything was fine, perfectly safe. <laughs> um, little circle, mm, a little circle punch. Do I have a little circle punch? Were all of my circles quite large? I feel like all of my circles are quite large. Oh, this one seems, yes. Do a hat brim. If you did not join me for the uh, for the stream where I did a slab build, uh, the secret is cookie cutters. <laughs> Cut yourself a perfect circle. I have big Sharpie color-coded marks on them so I remember which ones I use for which patterns. Okay. Top hat brim. And I feel like I feel like I I, I did a I did a a jaunty a jaunty hat curve, I think, when I drew it, right? Like it was, you know. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now. Let's, how tall should the top hat be? Yay tall, seems good. A jaunty, a jaunty hat. It was a very jaunty hat. Now I'm just gonna, just gonna roll this up, basically. And, uh, And uh, yeah, scrape the top so that it's, I don't know why I'm using this now. I just picked it up and now it's a tool. <laughs> These things happen. And so let's see how tall, how tall a hat. Let's, let's, mm, yeah, like there. Okay. Slice that. Yeah, see, we'll, we'll all travel when, when we've ended capitalism. <laughs> is what is what will happen? Okay. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Oh, I'm scraping off camera. It's not that interesting anyway. But. Just what, what do I, what, fishing line? What is, what is the fishing line for? I do not understand. I do not understand why I need some fishing line. Ah, yes, I have a wire tool. Um, it's it's shoved in the bag of clay. Um, but again, I don't, I feel like, I just like the exacto knife. I don't know. I'm a... Uh, I'm a rebel. I'm going against the grain. <laughs> Ooh, what I might get is one of those cheese slicer tools. Boop. 
but but we shall see. Right now I'm 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 making a very a very jaunty tiny hat that I want to put on this tiny quail. Just smoothing out its little It's brim. Yes, brim is the correct word. Good. I don't know why. My my, my vocabulary has been has been trouble today. Alright. Ah, how do we feel? Feels like it might be slightly too big, or but I don't know. Slightly too big. Just the appropriate amount of big. Good, a, a good, a good size, a good size of jaunty quail hat. I feel like if it gets too much smaller, it won't read clearly as a hat. Um, but what I will do is, uh, oops, is drop it. Now what I will do is just firm the top a little bit there. I'm going to try and get a sharper, cleaner edge. There we go. And then, really carefully, I'm going to try and draw a hat band on. By turning the hat in my hand. Hoping that, yes, that I create a circle. Good. And now, to apply the hat. Yeah, I mean of course of course it has a it has a band. I mean of course. And hat. Hat. <laughs> it is a quail. And oh at a jaunty angle. Put it no, I think it just needs to be well a slightly jaunty angle. There we go. And now we have a quail in a hat. A quail in a hat. Quail in a jaunty top hat. <laughs> And uh, and how are we? We're a little bit we're a little bit fragile still, but I think that we can that we can lift the oxalotl for a final oxalotl viewing. Look at his little happy face, little happy oops, little happy faced oxalotl gills, oxalotl belly, tail. Oh, look at that. Good thing we turned it over. I found a thing that needs needs smoothing and attaching. There. Cleaning up the oxalotl while we're while we're holding him upside down in the air. Get get a little bit of tidying done. There we go. Oh no, leg. Oh no. Leg issues. Okay. Well, that was traumatic and we will have to fix that leg. Um, which I will do in a minute. <laughs> it's fine. They can grow they can grow them back. Don't you worry. But for now, prop him back into place. I'm going to look up just a little bit more. Too much. And settle him down with his quail friend. 
and wrap it up. Yep, sometimes they can grow more than one leg back. If they lose one leg, they'll grow two. As many legs as they need. So, um, I'm pretty happy with that. I think the oxalotl turned out very oxalotl-like. I'm pretty, pretty keen on the design. Um, I've got, I've got the rest of the clay waiting back here. Um, so later this evening, I'll cover it, and later this evening, I'll, uh, I'll do a smaller one to kind of maybe nestle either beside him or kind of over him, or just separately, uh, depending on on how I'm feeling when I start it. And and then, uh, yeah, I'll take some pictures as I go through the firing and glazing process. I've been lucky, and nothing I've streamed has broken in that process, but that's always a possibility, so keep you up to date. <laughs> little a-lottle, aw, oh, little a-lottle. Little a-lottle and big a-lottle. Um... And yeah, I would say we Maxolotl, Bertolotl, Hannibalotl, Lizalotl. <laughs> Lizalotl is pretty good. Um, little Lottle, Big Lottle, all the all the Lottle puns. And uh, and and Top Hat Quail, whose name is Quince, who was already named named last week. So we've successfully returned to the sculpting table and made a thing. Everything worked, nothing fell apart. How exciting is that? Um, I'm going to play more with these tonight and post some photos later. I hope that you guys enjoyed my stream today. It's nice to be back at the clay table for a change. I have no idea what we're streaming next week. Um, I'll post something about it. It might be might we might be back to we might be back to sheep guana. I might return to sheep guana and do some proper uh, sort of scientific illustration versions of some sheep guana. But I might have another amazing idea partway through the week and change my mind. So no promises. Um, as Always, you can uh, donate to my Ko-Fi, which I refuse to call coffee, which is linked underneath the channel. Um, you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram, all with the name Sarah with D. And uh, I will see you next Friday or on the internet. Have a good night. Bye.